Hello and welcome to this very special episode of the Successful Mentalist podcast. Of course, my name is Ashley Green. I'm joined by my best friend and co-host Aidan O'Sullivan. But today's a very special episode because it's myself, Aidan and two other fancy people that you already know. Fantastic performers, fantastic mentalists, a fantastic hypnotist. They've traveled all over doing shows. One travels doing high-end corporate shows. Other does massive stage hypnotism shows. But today they're talking about something which they are, Aiden, they're geniuses, at, aren't they? Well, I'll be honest. These chaps, Rob Temple and Ken Dine, are some of our favorite uh, performers in the world. But when it comes down to, to actually getting an audience that's sometimes the the big question like okay it's great that we love performing and it's great that people are great at performing but if we can't get bums on seats to our shows or we can't get clients booking us we can be as brilliant as we want but if we're not getting the people there there's just no point to it and these guys have basically uh i don't want to say they've they've hacked the secret code behind email marketing but it really feels like they have and and in this interview we actually ran this as a live event for our community so if you ever want to jump in on any other live conversations with our guests uh, head over to the successful mentalist.com forward slash community we'll send you all the details to sign up for the community and you can come and be part of these live sessions and actually ask your questions to the guests in return but yeah this episode was great email marketing email is so powerful when it comes to booking gigs and most people do it so badly but in this episode wow like it's going to change the game of the way you start to send email so get ready, grab your notepad and pen, get ready to take all of these notes and absorb the wealth of information. But let's hand you over to the fantastic Rob and Ken. Hello, it's very nice to be here. Thanks for having us. Well, it's good to, good to have Ken as a, a coming back. Well, thank you for coming on. Yeah, I think you only wanted Rob in the first place. I said, yeah, we'll do it. No, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's going to be a really nice dynamic with having like you two geniuses here talking about this today. And uh, just for a callback from the last episode, which you was on, Ken, we had some fantastic feedback. People were talking this for days and weeks after on obviously the performance skills and actually the structure and writing the show. It was one fantastic episode. And I imagine Rob and Ken, it's going to happen the same again, because I know that you guys over the next 30, 35 minutes are going to drop an absolute ton of gold. But just for any of those really weird people out there who don't actually know about you, would you be able to give like a 30 second summary of who you are in your performance careers? Because you guys have done incredible stuff with that as well. I'm going to go with Rob first. Rob, tell us quickly about your performance career. Yeah, perfect. So for anyone who hasn't seen me before, I'm Rob, uh, Arthur Red, Arthur Rob, no more clues. Uh, Kennedy is the uh, uh, the other one. The one doing um, the jokes, the one who's being funny. That's the one, it's me. <laughs> uh, I, I, my background is heavily rooted in magic. I've done magic since I was a kid. But then when I was uh, 14, started learning hypnosis and really that took over my life. So um, from being 16, I've been a stage hypnotist. Uh, I've been lucky enough to do that pretty much all over the world and uh, have done, I'm 33 now. So that's 17 years of just doing that. Uh, so yeah, full-time stage hypnotist and uh, all of that jazz yeah and i've been basically doing um stand-up mentalism for i think 18 years at this point uh, mainly at conferences awards events that kind of thing um, but one of the things that rob and i both realized really early on is we both hate selling like we have taken sales training we are better than some people but certainly not natural at selling or anything like that um so what we both realized is it's, we're very good at putting systems in place and we think of marketing um, as literally a bit like coming up with the method for a trick. So if you think, a lot of us will think of marketing as this thing that we have to do in order to do the thing we want to do, which is go out there and wow people, amaze people, entertain people or whatever. But the truth is actually it's just, another, it's just trying to find the method for the trick. The effect you want to have is you want to have more bookings or you want to have a higher fee or you want to fill theater tickets, uh, theaters with, with ticket goers um, the way that Rob does. And that's just the effect. All we need to do is come up with the, with the method of that. And one of the ways you do that is by going through that process is making sure it is systemized. Um, and that's one of the things that Rob and I have been asked by a lot of entertainers to share with people and then it started getting broader than just entertainers, other businesses, entrepreneurs, people who sell any kind of course, any kind of membership, any kind of coaching program. We're asking how do we use those techniques in order to sell more stuff and the thing that we 
became just good at because we like it because we're weird um, is email marketing and, and figuring out how do we communicate with people predictably at scale using email in a way that doesn't feel like I'm sending out some crappy newsletter or I'm just bombarding people with, here's what I've been up to this month, because guess who cares about that? Nobody at all. Uh, and that's the reason most people get no results from their email marketing is because actually it, it's not good marketing, um, which is obviously hopefully what we can share with you today. Hell yes. Yeah. So obviously you mentioned like you've really noticed the importance of this and then the two of you decided to set up the email marketing heroes and started sharing your advice through there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's 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 one of those things now where we're, we're lucky and really genuinely very privileged to see not just the results of our email marketing, but the results of all of our students and clients' emails who sell everything from entertainment services through to like handmade jewelry and everything in between. And so uh, we really get the we get like this glimpse on sending hundreds of thousands of emails a month for our own businesses, but then also seeing probably collectively millions and millions of emails for our clients as well and seeing what goes on. So uh, that gives us a real insight into what works and what doesn't. So can I ask a really direct question here? Why do people do it wrong in the first place? What What is the real problem which you find that most people have and specifically the people who are live in this call today and the people going to be listening back on the recording like on the podcast for example why do you think magicians and people in general start doing emails wrong and it feels like spam and nobody wants to receive them it feels a bit crap mm. yeah i think i think the interesting thing about email is i think it's often seen as a one-way broadcast mechanism and it's often seen we call it email marketing but lots of people actually just do email sales and what i mean by that is they think oh i've got something to sell or i need to get a new client or i need to get a new gig or whatever so um, i'm gonna do a i'm gonna do a promotion of some description and i'm gonna just pick up my email list i'm gonna throw a load of crap at them and broadcast emails at them until some of them will hopefully buy and some of them will buy there's this old thing about emailing your list until they buy die or unsubscribe because everyone's going to do one of those three things at some point um, and we just hate all of that so it's very much seen as a thing where you send an email when you want to make a sale so if you think about the people that you're that you're on the list of for a second stepping outside of entertainment for, to, to, as an example that you all experience you buy a box of paper clips on the internet at some point from some stationery company and then now every two weeks you'll get an email because they're doing a special offer on chairs, a special offer on printers, a special offer on whatever. And the only way that's in any sense relevant to you is is if you happen to want a chair, you happen to want a printer, or you think, well, God, that's so cheap. I'm just going to buy it now because one day I will want a chair or a printer. And it's all just very like, we'll stick up a big sign and hopefully some people will walk, walk past and want that thing at the time. And the, the, one of the big changes that we've really made is to see email marketing much more like social media in that it's you're constantly posting great content and stuff and people find value in the stuff that you post regardless of whether they're ready to buy or not. So for example, if that stationery company were to flip their email marketing around so that rather than just broadcasting at me saying, hi, Rob, do you want to buy a chair? Do you want to buy a printer? If instead they sent me amazing tips, advice and content on the stuff I care about, like how do you make your office more comfortable? How do you make it so your office isn't too hot? How do you, be, how do you stay productive in an office when you're working from home all day? How do you make Zoom meetings more efficient? How do you do it? all the stuff that, we're, that you're instantly interested in if you work from home in a little home office, which they know because I once bought a box of paper clips from the home office shop. Then suddenly now I, I'm interested in what they've got to share with me, not just when they want to sell something, but on a daily basis. They could send me that every day of the year and I'd be interested because if it's going to make me more efficient, more productive and all the stuff I want to be. So what we realized is that actually email is just another content channel. For most people, it's just another app on their phone. It's snuggled between Snapchat, Snapchat and TikTok. Um, and that's, that's where most people check their emails. Mobile email usage is increasing dramatically. And so if all we do is type and send pretty pictures and stuff on social media, we can do the same thing by email and make that valuable and make that interesting to our to our subscribers. And then you can show up every day if you want to, because you, you, you're giving them stuff that's useful. And at the time that you do happen to be ready to buy a new computer, a new chair, a new printer, or book an entertainer for an upcoming event, they don't have to think about, oh, what was that magician called again? Who was that? Was it was it Boris? No, was it Bert? What was his name again? They don't have to like think about it because you're just in their inbox every day. And so I think that's that's one of the big changes we've made. So I know a question which comes up a lot with um, with magicians in particular when when we've spoken to them about this is, oh, I get that I'm sending out value, but does it not become a bit too spammy if I'm just constantly sending stuff every single day? 
And it can. It definitely can. I mean, a good re- a really good reason to not email very often is if your emails are terrible. If you're sending terrible emails, please don't email every single day. Definitely. But what we have to do is realize that people join your email list. They sign up to your newsletter or your tips or whatever on your website because they've got a problem or they've got something they're interested in and they want to hear about it. And we have to... My very first ever online product was £69, so about $99. It was for magicians. It was called Gigflow. And it was 28 days of an email every single day to help you build a marketing system for your business. And I sold multiple hundreds, maybe thousands of those things, probably not thousands, probably multiple hundreds of them, um, because that was a valuable process, because people got value from that. And the feedback and results that people saw from that were incredible. So if people are willing to pay to receive an email every single day, then they'll de- if you send the right types of email, then they can be valuable. But as long the big problem is we've got to remember is we've got to remember that these emails, these newsletters are not like those newsletters you used to design in publisher at school and try and fold into thirds and get all wrong and put terrible clip art on. That's not we mean well, not what we mean, not what we mean about by these newsletters by email. No, not at all. Um, what we're talking about is showing up regularly with something that's very valuable, but very quick to produce. So when people use our systems, they tend not to use many pictures. There's no fancy design. There's certainly no like template with like a yellow border and like a flashy, happy, like there's none of that stuff because actually that's distracting to the message. It actually um, will create more problems for you in deliverability and getting those emails through in the first place. And also, look, if, if I tell you I've got, oh, my mum, she bought the ugliest sofa you've ever seen the other day, if that's got something to do with what I'm talking about, then I put a picture of that sofa in, and if you just bought that sofa and you think it's wonderful, something bad just happened. I just alienated you. and Or you might like, just like that sofa. Maybe you didn't even buy a sofa, but you, you think, oh, it's actually quite a nice sofa. We just disconnected. Whereas just by having the words, the uglier sofa, by telling stories like that, people engage their imaginations and they decide what that looks like. They decide what ugly, what pretty, what gorgeous, what scary, what any emotion. They decide what that looks like for them. So... The only time it becomes spammy is if the person wasn't expecting it, if you no longer are relevant to to what they um, to what they expected or what they what they want, and also if they don't have a really clear option to get out, which is that that legally compliant unsubscribe button at the very bottom of every single email. If you don't do any of those things, and if you make sure that you turn up and you give value, you, f- you give people inspiration, you give, them, um, you give them the things that they want, and you actually help, genuinely help people. I mean, imagine, right? Genuinely show up and help people. Then at the time that it's ready, that, that, that they're ready, they can go, oh, yeah, they're not thinking, what was the name of that magician or that performer? You're at the top of their inbox. They know. How many times have you gone... Oh, I need uh, something. I'm sure I know somebody who does that. I'm sure I know a plumber. I'm going to know. I don't, but I can't think of that person's name. We don't want that to be the case. And it's a big difference between sending an email when you want to make a sale, which is what people used to do, versus sending emails. So at the moment when someone's ready to buy, you're there. And that's a very different thing. And we can only do that by starting to see email as a content channel. Like Rob said, because it's being read in the majority and increasing majority on people's phones, it's a content channel now. It's not a sales channel. It's not a, hey, buy my shit, buy my shit every single day channel. It's a, here's something valuable channel. And when you're ready to buy something, I'm going to be here. And I'm going to have proven that I'm around for the long term. And I'm going to have proven that I know what I'm talking about. And I'm going to have helped you along the way. That's particularly fascinating. And there's something that, that you guys have both said and we haven't addressed particularly, but it is that, that level of value, but that level of value daily uh, in, in some cases, mm. uh, at least more frequently. And I know that there are magicians out there and I, I'm guilty of this myself, is that I, I used to do the, the once a week or the once a month newsletter thing full of nothing important. Uh, how would uh, a, an entertainer, specifically say a magician, go about actually 
working out what kind of value to give to people and, and should they just jump into daily without it or with it? Here's the thing, right? If you show up monthly, that's a really quick way to get into the spam box. If you want the express lane of the spam box, do an email newsletter every single month, add some pictures in there and put free sex, please, in the subject line and you're off, right? Um, in seriousness, the, the biggest reason people end up being, being sent to the spam box and having problems with delivering their emails is because people have forgotten who they are, so they report them as spam. And if you think of email deliverability as a bit like your credit score, because it's very similar, if you only email once a month, that means you're only giving Gmail, Ymail, AOL, all those platforms, you're only giving them 12 chances a year to judge how good your emails are. Whereas if you email more often, once a week, a few times a week, every day, whatever, you're building up that reputation saying, hey, every time, I e every time this person emails, they get like 25%, 35%, 60% of, of, of the people who receive their emails actually open them. This person is doing a good job. Um, and so that, that's a really fast way. Now, in terms of how people can email, yeah, so here's the shocking thing. Across four brands, between Rob and I, we personally email every single day. Four brands. Now, right now, I realize a lot of people that's like every day. Okay, one of my businesses, it's only five days a week, Monday to Friday. That's where I give tips to fellow entertainers, um, stories and inspiration and ideas of what you can do in your business and marketing to get more gigs. Uh, but but the rest of our businesses have got nothing to do with that. We teach email marketing, we teach self-development, et cetera, et cetera. So, we can do it because we send these emails really, really quickly. They take about four and a half to, you know, maybe maybe 10 minutes maximum each. Um, but it's all about the content. In fact, I'll shut up and let Rob talk about the content because it's really about serving the emotional values of your audience. I think this is really going to come down as well to who you're building a list of. So to put that into perspective, in my world, I'm building a list of people who are going to come and buy tickets to come and see my show. In other words, they're general members of the public. It's Maureen from down the bingo and Jimmy who meets, he works in the sheet metal factory. Whereas if you're getting booked for, cause I've got a very high class audience. If you're getting booked for, uh, I can only really say that cause they're not watching this. Um, and whereas if you're getting booked for high, high flying corporate gigs, then you're probably being booked by the assistant of the somebody or, you know, if they've got a, if they've got a department who happens to take care of events, then you've got them. So the first thing to do really is to look at who is it that's booking you for events. If it's, oh, sorry, who is it that you're building a list of? If it's people who hire you for their events or for their venues, then that's one group of people. If it's people like me who are buying tickets to come and see your show, that's a very different thing. Then the next step down to that is to figure, okay, great, what do those people all have in common and what's interesting to them? So really dead simple example uh, here, and this probably won't apply to anyone on this call, I don't think, but I'm just going to give it to you because it's something we will understand. So if you look at children's entertainers, they have the easiest, lowest hanging fruit here, which is they get to, look. if you look at what all of their, their people they're building a list of have in common, their parents or grandparents. And those parents or grandparents are interested in things like family time, creating memories. Uh, how, how do you keep the kids occupied through six or seven weeks of the summer holidays without emptying your bank account like all of the stuff that gets discussed on mum's net which has become this enormous thing right i've heard and so basically what you've Rob's got on to there do... all the time <laughs> just in so, case yeah so what you've got to do is you've got to figure out what do they what do they have in common well the stuff they want to hear about all the time is how do they have better time with their kids how do they keep their kids occupied how do they keep the kids entertained how do they do all of that when you look at uh, corporate events or that kind of thing again you're looking at the same kind of uh question it's how, what's their emotional needs well it's things to do with how do i look good in front of my colleagues how do i make sure the events i organize are amazing how do i make sure that this is good how do i make sure that that's good and again you can supply that you have uh you have more authority to talk about about all of that side of events than most people on earth because you're at more of them than most people on earth likewise if you're a wedding entertainer then you get to talk about all the stuff that's interesting towards weddings how do you make sure that the wedding's going to be awesome how do you make sure the guests have a good time how do you make sure of this how do you make sure of that so i think wait what one of the big things you've got to re how do you make a good first impression on people? Whereas for me, I'm a hypnotist selling tickets to a theater show. Well, I'm talking about fun stuff that you can do with hypnosis, interesting stuff you can do with hypnosis, all the like the hypno tricks that some magicians use inside of things. All of that stuff is interesting. I can send people little videos of stuff like that. So what you're really looking to do is figure out what are the emotional needs of the audience above and beyond the thing that I, I sell, which is my service as an entertainer. 
because you can't email every list. And do you want to book a magician yet? Do you want to book a magician yet? How about now? Do you want to book a magician now? Do you want to book a magician today? No. What about tomorrow? Um, you can't do that, but you can show up every day and make their lives slightly better. And so what you're looking to do is to tell little interesting stories. So it could be, once we get out of this damn pandemic, it could be about the gig you did yesterday or the gig that you did last week. Although I realize some people are doing gigs now. It was nice. Uh, good for you. Um, so you could talk about the gig that you did last night and this funny thing that happened. I got this reaction from this spectator and this is why, and this is what this means. And then you relate that across to, uh, to, to something that happened at their event. So for example, I did this amazing trick. There was a lady there, she was in a wheelchair and I demonstrated this amazing thing and this happened. Isn't that great? And then somebody came over and started talking to her that wouldn't happen before. Here's a really cool way that you can create icebreaker moments for everybody who attends your event. This is what I learned from that. Wow, that's just a really cool thing that's just made my job as the secretary to whoever who's organizing this damn event. I don't know anything about organizing events. I've just been asked to do it. It's not my job. I've just been asked to do it. You've just made their life slightly better and slightly easier. So what you're always looking to do, and, and those those uh, emotional needs of your audience are going to vary slightly, again, depending on what type of person you're getting on your list and what their, what their goals are and where they're at. Um, but when you turn up with that stuff every day, it's valuable. And the, the reference to the fact they can hire you is buried away somewhere down in the bottom of the email, either in the signature of the email or just as the, the last sentence or paragraph of the email. And it kind of becomes invisible when they're not looking to actually hire somebody. But when they are looking to hire somebody, you're the first magician they think of. They never think of, or whatever, they never think about going to Google and going, what was that heart player called again? Because you just like kind of said, and the good news is while nobody is doing this in the entertainment industry, uh, you are going to be one of the only people. Well, you're going to be the only person doing it. I think that's particularly valuable. I think I think it's it's that coming from a place of service, which we like. We speak to so many uh, like entertainers, and a lot of our clients come into in, into some of our programs and some of the things that we're we're teaching with this. I need to get more gigs. I need to do X, Y, Z, or or I want to I want to make this happen. And when we stop, it is that pause moment of stop. What's the value? What is the actual impact, that tangible impact? And I, I love that it's the same thing, uh, if not more relevant and more important in the world of email, stopping looking at other people's value first and then being just a good person overall, not just a, a fantastic entertainer. And I think that's pro probably one of the big reasons that um, I know from myself, like 90% of my, my paid work has come from good reputation. And, and, and I can only imagine what that would have done if I'd have started adding actually email into this. Just one interesting thing on what you said there. The cool thing is that if you get booked for a gig and the gig is today and you go and do the gig and then tomorrow you continue sending those emails, you might think, well, that's stupid because that person might not, if it's like a corporate event or something, they might not hire me for a few years now because they've got to have different stuff. They might not hire me if it's a wedding. They're probably, hopefully, hopefully they're not going to have another wedding. Uh, so they're probably not going to hire me again for that. You might think, well, that's, that's that's that person done now. That's them clocked off. But actually, if you continue to show up with value every day, when their sister Clara's getting married, the first thing they go is, oh, do you want the magician who was at my wedding? Because you're still showing up and delivering value every day. So I, I think that the ongoing value in terms of turning refer, um, gigs into referrals is, is really powerful there as well. Hey there, guys. It's Aidan here from the Successful Mentalist podcast. Just interrupting for a quick second to say thanks for listening. Now, of course, if you have just got a few moments, bring out your phones, whack the, the little subscribe button on. Um, yep, you know, the one that says subscribe, just press that button. And again, you're going to get updates from every time that we drop a new episode. You'll get those notifications straight into your mobile device or wherever you're listening to us. And again, it'll help boost our stats and get us out to more magicians and entertainers ac across the world, which is exactly what we want. Anyway, I'm going to leave you to go back to the podcast now but make sure you subscribe. I think so. I think that, again, referrals are, are probably just, well, it's so much easier. It's just the zero pound cost at the end of the day. Um, so from at this point, like people are probably saying, thinking about, uh, about actually sending more emails, uh, starting to like lead with value and look and make that emotional tie in. How, how would somebody literally go about doing this? Is, is there a, a specific time that people should send email i know this is a question you guys you guys get asked quite a lot like when is the perfect time to send email how like what should i do for certain people is there a holy grail of open rates and click rates and and specific numbers that people should be chasing it's a great question and, it's, and there's a lot of bits in there really if we want to get into the sort of the depths of it i mean the first thing is if you go from emailing once a week or once a month to emailing every single day you will create yourself a big problem you can't just go from zero to 100. Uh, that's not going to work. So what we want to do instead is we want to make sure we want to make sure that 
you you allow people to give you the permission to do that or they have a really very clear way of getting out because at the moment they haven't joined your email list they're not on your newsletter to receive that probably um so uh, just as a heads up our highest across two different businesses we've measured it in our highest um opt-in rate so that the most the highest performing reason to join our email list we split we did a split test on our blog at emailmarketingheroes.com you'll see that there's a a big thing that fills the screen when you first join the when you first go to the website we did a split test of two different lead magnets two different ways of get two different bribes to get people to come and join our email list the first one was just hey do you want to get our free daily emails We'll give you some value. It'll be great. And the second one was, so 50% of people got that. 50% of the people got another one which said, would you like our four-day flash sale email campaign to help you make a whole bunch of sales the next four days? So we did a split test for like, I think it was two months. There or thereabouts, right? Might have been a bit longer. Might be mature. I don't remember. And then I went and looked at the stats. And can you guess which one won? Well, the answer is, get our free daily emails won by 68%. So not even a little bit, significant. And the really interesting thing about this is, is one, it's easier and faster for you and I to produce it because most of the time we spend a lot of time thinking, what can I give away as my free download on my website to get people to join my email list? You don't have to think about that anymore. It's, would you like to get my daily tips about how to spend how to increase the quality of the time that you spend with your family or whatever those tips are going to be for your for your business versus having to go and like come up with this amazing lead magnet so that's the, that's the first thing so you want to get people on the list the open rate and all that sort of stuff is um it's an interesting discussion because um first of all open rate reporting is flawed because a lot of um a lot of platforms now actively block the reporting of open rates. In fact, Tim Cook recently um, announced that Apple's new rollout of this privacy thing are going to actively block open rate reporting. This is something I came out the other day. Um, so that's going to go away. Um, but the good news is it doesn't matter. Honestly, it doesn't matter because you can't, I can't, Rob can't, nobody can pay the bills with open rate. You can't also pay the bills with subscriber numbers. The only thing you can do is use one really simple number to figure out whether your email marketing is doing well or it's doing poorly. And also to see whether you're doing, whether you're getting better over time or you've sort of lost the plot a bit and you need to sort of course correct. And that number is this number. It is your earnings per subscriber per month. So let me just break down what that is and how you ca calculate it. It's really complicated. Not, right? Here's all you do. Is you get the look at the number of subscribers you've got in your active campaign, MailChimp account, whatever you've got, your email marketing platform, your Wix account. You open that up and you go, right, I've got 200 people on my list. Let's just say, it's, let's, get the, let's make some easy numbers. I've got 100 people on my, on my email list. That's good. And how much did I make from gigs this month? I made uh, I made a hundred pounds. Great. Divide one number by the other. I earned one pound per subscriber. That's it. And then the next month, you do the same number again. How much did I earn in that month? And how many subscribers did I have? Divide one number by the other. Let's say you got a bit better at email marketing because you've been studying it and really putting the effort in that's needed. And you earned 200 pounds and you had you didn't get any new subscribers at all just because you didn't you weren't focusing on that. You still had a hundred subscribers. Now I earned two pounds for every subscriber. Business, like performance, like art, like anything, is a one-player game. All you're doing is competing with yourself against your previous earlier self. It doesn't matter what my open rate is or how much I'm earning per subscriber. The only exception is because we teach email marketing, you want to, might want to check out that what we teach actually works. Um, so maybe we, we would tell people what our earnings per subscriber are. But in general, it doesn't really matter because all you want to do is make sure what you earn this month is more than you earned last month uh, per subscriber. So they're the numbers to really, really look at. But let's remember remember as well that email marketing is not just about newsletters. The biggest mistake, and this is something everybody here can do right now, even if the idea of emailing every single day or multiple times a week freaks you out, 
Okay, let's say you didn't want to do that. That's okay. We get that, right? But there's something else you absolutely do need to do. It's the biggest reason poor people are spam, people don't ever hire you or book you or buy your product if you've got product as well. And it's this word context that we talk about. Now, I'm going to let Rob explain what that is, but let me tell you a quick story to illustrate the point. So I was flicking through Instagram the other day, looking at all the much more beautiful people than me, and I saw this advert for this marketing person, and they were doing one of those five-day challenges where you can learn a thing. And I was like, great, I want to learn the thing. That sounds good. So I clicked on the um, on the attractive man's advert, and I put my email address into his lovely um, fancy page that looked nice, and then I hit send, and it went, thank you, awesome, check your emails. So I scurried over to my email app, and the first email I get from this very famous, very established, multi-million pound a year marketer was this bonus number three goes away tonight what but bonus what's bonus number one what's bonus number what's the product i didn't even know what the product was Never mind what bonus number one, two, and three are. Never mind caring a, a toss and all about bonus number three going away. I've got no context. So I click through and find out what bonus number three was that was going away and find out what the product was. It was a £3,000 uh, or $3,000 um, coaching program. I'm sure it was wonderful. I'm sure it was amazing. But I was not able to buy. It was impossible for me to buy because there was no context. And this is really easily fixed using this context concept. So there's a thing where loads of people, and this came about because at the time, we were still doing most of our list building through giving away some sort of lead magnet. So some sort of free report, some sort of white paper, a free video, you know, something like that. And um, and so what happened was people come along and they said, you want this free report about how to have the best kids party your kids have ever had and their friends will all be jealous. And people call it, yes, thank you very much. I'll put my email address in for that. And then what they're expecting to happen is to click a button, especially if they're not in the marketing world, they're expecting to click a button and they're expecting it to download to their computer or worst case scenario, you might email it to them and they'll have to go and, they'll have to go and fish it out from there. And then they do that and then you send them an email and then the next day you send them another email that they weren't expecting and they go, oh, okay. And then the next day they get another email that they weren't expecting either. Right, okay. And then the next day they get another one and the next week there's another one and then for weeks and months until they buy, die or unsubscribe. And effectively, what's technically happening there is we're sort of like catfishing people in with your my report, and they go, yes, thank you very much. And then we're bombarding them with emails they didn't ask for. Even if you were to say in the copy on the page, download this free thing, and we'll send you emails until you die, like even that's buried and most people will miss it. That's a good that's a good bit of copy there, mate. You should write that down. So um, what I think we um, what I think we should do is to change this so that when people come in, we have to do a bit of a handover. We have to say, thank you for requesting the free report. Here it is. And here's what's going to happen now. Right? So we created this thing called the getting to know you sequence. It's our version of the welcome sequence. The email welcome sequences have been around for a while, but they had a few problems in them. They were very um, self-serving. They were very welcome to my world. Have a seat, make yourself comfortable. This is why I'm brilliant. And we thought that it doesn't, it, there's some fundamental things it sort of missed from the subscriber's perspective and useful stuff that we needed it to do that the, the sort of standard welcome sequences just did. That's why we created the Getting to Know You sequence. We're both big musical theatre fans. It's named after that song from The King and I. And so basically, uh, oh, no, Kennedy, I thought he was going to sing it there, but he didn't. No, um, you're getting nothing from here. Nothing. <laughs> and so basically, what the job of the welcome sequence, the getting to know you sequence as we wrote it, is it's four emails over four days. So one email a day for four days. And even if you're not going to do daily emails from that point on, you should still do this as one email a day for four days. It's automated, which means you write it once. We wrote ours years ago, put it in a, an email marketing system and just let it run on autopilot so that every single subscriber who comes in goes through that first. And there's a little bit of technical wizardry to set up. It's dead simple, but so that people don't receive your like day-to-day -day broadcast emails while they're in that four-day sequence. So everyone new is going to come in. They're going to go through day one and then day two and then day three and then day four because that's how the calendar works. And then when they come out the other end of that, they'll be tagged or whatever, and they'll start receiving your your day-to-day -day email promotions about whatever stuff is. And the first email in that sequence is literally to say, hello, this is who I am. Thanks for joining my newsletter. And now that you're here, 
here's what you can expect. You're going to get an email every whatever your frequency is, where I'm going to help you to, and then whatever you're going to help them to do. And this is why that's important. Also, I've got a podcast. You should come and check that out. And I've got one of these. You should check that out and come and hang out in my Facebook group of other mums organizing kids' parties. There's loads of stuff going on in there as well. Like tell them how else they can connect with you and how, how else they can get value from what it is that you do. Um, and then what happens is over the course of that sequence, you get to do some other stuff. You get to tell them about you. You get to find out about them, give them some stuff they can click and sort of track a bit of data on them. Put your Mr. Mark Zuckerberg T-shirt on and start collecting data on people. This is what they're interested in. This is what they like to do. Uh, and then when the, you can use that data going forward, how many kids have they got? Oh, it's great. They've got three kids. That's three kids' birthday parties I could be doing. There's all this useful data now that you, you get to use. Oh, they have they have awards dinners as well as that kind of thing. Oh, that's really interesting. It's just useful intel. Uh, and then again, you've got this unfair advantage against anyone else that they could be looking at because other people just don't have that data. You, you know what kind of events they're organizing, how often they're organizing. It is always them that organizes it. Are there other people involved? You've suddenly got all this information that's useful to you because you've done this getting to know you sequence thing. They get to know you and you get to know them. And it becomes a really strong start to the relationship. With our sequence, it's four emails. And usually what happens is somebody joins your list today and you might get you might get really high open rates and really high interest on that first email. And then the engagement on the second email drops. And then after like day three or four, it like falls off a cliff. Our engagement across the getting to know you sequence, it does decline. There's, there's no way of avoiding that really um, because pe some people just don't want to hang around. But uh, it's really fairly steady. Like I think our, our first email is 80 something percent. And I think it's it's high 70 percent by the, by email four. And so what that means is by the end of that getting to know you sequence, we've got a whole raft of people who are now committed and interested. And they, we've done that really nice handover thing. And everything else you do going forward now has context. That context. Every email they receive, they know where it's coming from, why it's coming to them, what it is. They can't really forget who you are, the way that you, I mean, we've all joined people's newsletters before about anything you want to learn, whether that's crocheting or gardening or whatever. And after three or four days, you've forgotten who this person is and why they're emailing you. So again, that eliminates more or less all of that. So uh, yeah, you want to have some sort of welcome sequence that brings people in and tells them why they're going to stick around. Wow, fantastic. So just to recap, email marketing is a must for entertainers. And if you're going to do it, you don't want to be sporadic all over the place. Once in a blue moon, this is what I'm up to this month. Ideally, if you can deliver the daily emails, always be there, but go from like a value orientated point of view, something that's actually going to be useful for them. And then you whack on that welcome sequence as well. So they really understand and get you and know exactly what you do. Surely then you're just set for success. And we've had a couple of comments uh, in the chat, a couple of questions. Um, we're going to quickly obviously round out uh, today's podcast and then quickly hop into answering those questions if that's okay. Biden, this has been fantastic. And I'm, I'm looking at there. Have you got any final questions that you want to ask on this? Well, I just want to say thanks to you guys uh, for, for actually jumping on board and, and for the for the people that have loved what you've shared here. Where can we send people? to come and come into your world sure if you yeah if you want to get stuff that's specifically marketing as it directly applies to entertainers because if you've studied a lot of marketing and trying to make it apply as an entertainer you'll realize that a lot of the generic stuff does not apply for entertainers so if you're specifically looking for that stuff um, you can get my daily emails monday to friday i don't do seven days a week monday to friday you can go to mentalunderground.com slash daily mentalunderground.com slash daily but if you are do something that's broader than entertainment. I know there's a few people who are here while we're recording this, like Terry and other people who do things that are broader than purely going out there as an entertainer and you want to really up your email marketing game. There's a few things you can do. One, if you like podcasts, I think you do. We have a rather funny one about email marketing. Imagine that. It's called The Email Marketing Show and that's available on Spotify and anywhere else that you get podcasts. We also have a really awesome event. Basically, Last year, we held an event called Inbox 2020, uh, which was supposed to be offline. It was up to £500 per person per ticket, it was supposed to be at a beautiful Hilton Hotel. And of course, COVID happened, so we had to bring it online. This year, we're doing it again. We decided to keep it online, and this year, we're going to make it free. So it's completely free to attend. Literally, it's a two-day event. The speaker lineup is insane. It's all about email marketing. We've come up with a brand new name for it. We've called it Inbox 2021. 
Uh, can you see how we did that? It took a long time. Um, if you want to take a look at the tickets for that, it's, it's free. So come and register um, at emailmarketingheroes.com slash inbox. Emailmarketingheroes.com slash inbox. I think that's probably everywhere they can go really well. I mean, there's a billion other places. We could do like a big commercial, but I don't think we will. Unless we're going to talk about your Tinder profile, that's everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, tell us about that, Chen. <laughs> Ken, where, where, where can they find you on Tinder? That's where everyone came in for today. <laughs> that, that's really Screw the email marketing. They want to get in with you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just want to say a massive thank you for dropping a ton of gold. Honestly, I think this has been so useful because, you know, when I, when I started looking into this, when I got into entertainment, I didn't really understand anything about this i i knew i had to do email marketing it was like that thing was like oh yeah i I guess i've got to do this but then it was like i don't really know how to do it and i don't want to seem spammy so i'll just stick to the once a month just sending crap and and this is completely different to everything that you think you know and it's been so useful so handy so thank you so much for sharing this it's been an absolute honor gents and absolutely fantastic thanks for having us Thank you, Paul. And I just want to very quickly just wrap up with the uh, final questions because we've had some amazing questions in from the live audience that are actually in this call today. Um, so if we can have a quick fire round, which is like, pow, question, answer, question, answer. That would be fantastic to finish off. Uh, first one, Thomas Dixon. Hello again. Uh, he's putting a question, Rob and Ken. I noticed that lots of E... Uh, sorry, <laughs> My dyslexia? Well, <laughs> I'm the one reading this. Maybe Aiden should read it, but it put me on the spot. It's like, God, I've got to put up with words. I notice that lots of marketing emails start with the story, but then most of the time finish with a call to action, like buying a ticket, book this, buy that. Is it always necessary or, advi- or advisable to do it? Yeah, so I think uh, it's not necessary. It is advisable. Um, so the way that we see it is that if you have the opportunity to put that in front of people and it isn't the pure sole focus of the email, then you should. So for example, one of the things that we want to get away from is we want to get from the, away from emails that have no purpose other than to buy something most of the time. Sometimes that's not possible, like especially if you're selling a product of some description and that product like is going up in price or they're running out of stock or you know it's something that's got a limited time on it. Sometimes you'll just want to send an email where the pure focus is to say, just to let you know at midnight, the price is going away, the bonuses are going away, the things disappear. Appearing. So that's very product focused. In terms of what you're doing, though, you as an what it's probably doing as an entertainer is you don't want to send people emails that have no other purpose other than to buy from you because most of the time that's not very interesting. So we want emails. If you took if you with, this, with most emails, if you took out the call to action, there'd be no other reason to open the email. There's nothing. There's nothing else there. And so we want to make sure that there's always a reason to open your emails, regardless of whether somebody wants to buy you, buy from you, hire from you, book a ticket or whatever. Um, so, but, but if you're going to send that out, you might as well stick it in there for people who do want to at the end. And the way that we tend to do it is we tend to have some sort of story, some sort of lesson, which is like the moral of that story. This is one of the four frameworks that we've got. Um, tell some sort of story, the lesson or the moral of that story as it applies to them. And then a very casual call to end, uh, call to action at the end. And then what's happening there is you've got the story, which is valuable because it's got entertainment, value, inspiration, motivation, ideas, et cetera. Then you've got the the lesson, which is valuable for the same sort of reason. So you've got two bits of value in every email. And then you've got your call to action, which is obviously one bit of a sales pitch. So in every single email you send, you're outweighing the offer with value two to one. You've got two bits of value and one bit of email. In every email that you send, that means you no longer have to worry about, am I just going to send an email with a bit of value today or am I going to send a a sales pitch? You don't have to worry about that because 100% of your emails, more or less, have all of those elements in them. So uh, that way you can feel good about it. And what happens is the call to action, and I mean this in a good way, not a bad way, the call to action sort of just becomes invisible to the people who are not ready to buy from you. And what I mean by that is I don't mean it's pointless because they've got like banner blindness to it. It's just disappeared. I mean, it's just, it doesn't get in the way. It doesn't irritate people. They're just aware of the fact that it's there. And when they're ready, when they're ready to book, when they're ready to buy, they just they just can and will. They don't have to dig around to find that call to action. When was the last time that they sent me an email about that again? Uh, so it, uh, it's just more efficient to put it there. So not necessary, but is advisable. Perfect. So the next question we've had in is from the wonderful Terry Tyson. And he said, in the email, should it contain something of value, i.e. actual, uh, oh, we've had another question, we'll just move this up, um, i.e. actual usable content, tips, techniques, uh, industry specific news, or call to action, or stories that entertain but have a tie in to your services or what? All right. Uh, first of all, Terry Tyson is one of my favorite human beings. So I just want to tell you, hello, Ty- Terry, Mr. Tyson. 
Is that one? Mr. Tide. Um, so um, the way we think of it is if you use the formula that well, any one of our four formulas, but the, for example, the one that Rob just shared, which is the story lesson offer, what you'll find is because our emails are usually like 150 to 175 words total, including the story lesson and the offer, you won't be able to go into too much what we call hard teaching. So what this whole thing to be is soft teaching. And the simplest way, and this is a very generic way of thinking about it, but the simplest way of getting into that is to tell people what they should be doing and why they should be doing it and why it's important. But you don't want to give people like the steps to do it. You don't want to say, click here and do this or ask this question. We want to tell them there are questions they should be asking or they should be thinking about this. So... Um, because these emails, they need to be fast to produce. The only reason we can email as frequently as every day is because we don't have to sit and think about, right, what's my seven step process for this thing? It's very rare that will be the case. If we are gonna do that kind of thing, we're doing it for a very specific reason because it probably evokes more questions around the thing we're gonna offer them. Um, and that then that then step that multiple step process will um, become part of a um, an automation. We wouldn't do that as a one off email on it on a day. So, on our, in terms of our day to day emails, these newsletter type things, it's all about the what they should be doing. Hey, have you thought about you should be thinking about this and you should be doing this? So every single day, people read my emails for entertainers, for example. And I'm telling them, hey, you need to be thinking about prioritizing what you're doing when, otherwise you're going to just go overwhelmed. Oh, yeah, I should be doing that. So there is value there. Now people are thinking about those things, but I'm not giving them my exact process for how I stay hyperproductive. Because if people want that, they can join entrepreneur performers in a circle or in the email marketing business, you might tell them that it's important to have a combination of, so one of the ways to get really efficient and make sure you've got context to all of your emails is to make sure you've got a combination of email automations and real-time newsletters. You need to have both of those things. That's, that's how you simplify your business. Wow, great, I've learned a thing. But of course, if people wanna learn our automations and get a brand new one every single month and see how those things come into play and get our coaching twice a month, then the way to do that is to join our membership about email marketing called The League. So it's, it's about telling people what they should be doing, why they should be doing it, making it important to them, and then what you, what you sell, your speaking services, your workshops in your case, Terry, um, your masterclass, that type of thing, that's where they get the actual how. And again, if anybody here is doing any speaking, if you teach anything, if you go beyond purely entertainment and you actually add some kind of educational element, one of the things you should definitely look at doing, it's the, one of the, thing, the best things I ever did was leveraging your expertise and turning them into some kind of educational course where people can learn from you in a way that does not rely on you exchanging time for money. So while you're on stage or doing a presentation in, in a room somewhere, you might also be selling a few of your courses online and uh, you can be in two places at once, which is the flip and dream. So uh, hopefully that helps. Fantastic. That is that perfect. Third question in for, is from Girish. It says, uh, is it okay to send an email every time a new blog is uploaded to let people know? I assume this is the same as email marketing as you're still communicating by email, albeit for a blog which isn't in the email. Yeah, so it's actually a really, um, can I just say, by the way, Girish is one of my favorite people in the world, you know, so Mr. Taylor, as I like to call him, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to put that out there. I'm just going to just do a candidate. Didn't work, never mind. Um, I, uh, I, uh, Rob doesn't so this... write his own jokes for his show. <laughs> <laughs> Only the good ones. Um, so it's a really good question. And do you know what you've, what you've picked up on here? And I'm really glad you've asked the question is a really good. So one of the reasons why people don't have, uh, one of the reasons why people don't have, uh, why, people, why people annoy their subscribers with emails is because they don't have good reasons to send emails. Most of the time, what we're looking for is a good reason to send an email. So this happened at a gig. That's a good lesson in that. That's a good reason to send an email. And so whenever you release a new piece of content of any description, whether that's a blog in your case, whether it's a podcast episode like this, whether it's a, um, a YouTube video, if you're on TikTok and you're putting out, you know, like obviously magic on TikTok's become a real thing, magic on Instagram, you're putting content anywhere. That's a really good reason to email your list and tell them about this thing that happened, especially if you can, if you can wrap a story around it. So I was out in the street doing this magic thing. This is what happened. I've filmed it. It's on TikTok. Go and have a look. So yeah, if you've got any sort any form of content, whether it's a blog post, YouTube video, 
TikTok video, Instagram video, replace wherever the videos will be hosted when you listen to this, um, and uh, or a podcast episode, it's a really good reason to email. One of the biggest bits of advice we give people when they come to us with an email on our like coaching calls is they'll say, here's an email I wrote, can you critique it? And it's like a mile long, if emails were measured in miles, it's like a mile long, and they're trying to say too much stuff in one email. And did you know that this, and what that means is that this, and don't forget to do this, before you do anything else, do this. And what they've done is they've taken like what could be 10 emails, and they've put it into one because they feel like, well, because when you sit down with a blank email and you just start writing, your fingers do tend to just write, but you don't have to send what you write, you can edit it. It's not like this where we're live and everything we say is, is live. You can edit what you write. So if you write something and look at it and go, I think I've sort of, I think I've veered off my original point here, which is dead easy to do. You go, right, well, let, let's find out what my original point was. Oh, it was that. Okay, great. Well, everything else is just, is other points. So I'm going to take those out. I'm going to pop those to one side, save them because I've just done a little bit of work towards next tomorrow's email and the day after that's email. So you're always looking for good reasons to send emails. Have one one email, one point, one thing, and a, a new blog post, new video, new podcast, new bit of content is a really good reason to send an email. Well, here's one interesting thing that we found, and we did a lot of testing with our members in our email ma- marketing membership, and that is, and we did we had a problem in our own emails as well, uh, which was every time we send people a link to a piece of content, so it was our our podcast for us, we got the lowest ever open and click through rates compared to any other content we put out. Compared, we got lower click through rates to go listen to our free podcast than go and join our membership, like then go and pay us. And it was really strange. And so we played around with why that was. And we asked a few other people, are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? And people were saying, yeah, when I send people links to my blogs, I get terrible click through rates. Um, send people links to my YouTube channel, terrible click through rates. And the reason was, is we broke our own rule. And that is, we didn't show up and do the story, the lesson, then the, the call to action, the offer. In the case of when you release a piece of content, the call to action, the offer at the end, does not always need to be a paid offer. It can be a free thing. So keep the same format because this format of these like these four different formats, but in this case, the story lesson offer is a really high performing way of getting people to emote. Because think about the, the reason that formula works and we refined it so heavily is it starts up with emotion. The story. Stories are emotionally charged. Then it backs it up with a logic. The, uh, the the lesson. I've learned a thing. And that means we, we've we had all of our, um, our, our objections handled. And then we're able to follow that through to the click through of go listen to the piece of content. So don't go, don't send emails that say, hey, I just added a new blog post to my blog. It's about six things you wish you could do standing on your toes. Um, go click here. There's, there's no value in that email. The email itself needs to be valuable. And if it is, and if it's emotionally valuable, remember there's different types of value, emotional value here, then um, then that's when people get to go along with you a bit further and go, oh, I'm emotionally in- engaged in this. I'm emotionally invested in this. I'm going to click on that link. So yeah, don't do the whole, here's a picture of the, the featured image on the top of my blog, and here's a little bit of preview text from the blog post. Guess what? The way you write blog posts is different to the way you write effective emails. So you need to make sure you treat them as their own separate channel. That's why um, you know, tweeting the link to your latest blog post on its own often will not work um, because you need to create context for the channel, and that's really, really important. Oh, fantastic. I think that's some really, really important... Uh, points actually to 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 wrap this up uh gents it has been an absolute pleasure to have this conversation with you guys so much value on so many different things uh and it's been a it, it's been a good one i've enjoyed it yeah it's honestly been fantastic and i know so many people here are gonna ah oh, they're gonna excel after this because there's gonna be so many things people are gonna be changing so once again ditto everything aiden said thank you so much and i'm sure we'll see you soon cheers